to truly appreciate where you are, you should know at least a bit of its history. That is my goal with this video. If you would be interested to learn more about Hungarian history from the Hungarian, please let me know. I'm a huge history buff, but making this kind of video is a lot of work and I would like to know that it will have an audience. The area has been inhabited since the Stone Age. They have also found relics from the Iron Age. You can check them out in an exhibition in the castle. Eger is one of the oldest cities in Hungary. When Hungary was officially founded in 1000, our founding king, St. Stephen, founded the city to be the seat of a bishopric. The first bishops came from western countries and they didn't come alone. We have evidence of violence from now Belgium settling in the area. The town grew, but in the 13th century, during the Mongolian invasion, it was burned down. Yes, you heard that right. Mongols invaded Hungary in the 13th century. However, they didn't stay long, as because the reigning Khan died, they abandoned their conquest and returned to settle succession. That's when Béla IV came along. In Hungary, we call him our second founding king because he rebuilt the country after it was devastated. He had a campaign to rebuild a network of forts and castles from stone to prevent them from being burned down again. It was also during this time that they started to produce wine in the region. Although the city was the seat of the local bishop, it was also an important center of the Reformation movement in the 16th century. The town is best known for a famous victory against the Turks that happened here in 1552 when the defenders of the castle managed to beat the Turkish army. More on that in my video on the castle. Check it out when it becomes available. The castle fell into Turkish hands in 1596, however. I have to make a note of the historical situation of Hungary here for my international viewers who weren't taught this in school. So, at this point Hungary is broken up into three parts. One is the Kingdom of Hungary, which is ruled by the Habsburgs. The middle part is Ottoman Hungary, ruled by the Turks. The third part is the Principality of Transylvania, which is the only part with a Hungarian ruler. I have to make a personal note that Martin Zifrata György, who was instrumental in setting up Transylvania, was an indirect ancestor of mine. During the Turkish occupation, Eger was the center of the surrounding area. The castle was fortified, but the Turks built very few buildings when they occupied the city. The only one that really remains is the minaret. However, they were the first to use the hot springs in the area and build the first bath above it. At the end of the 17th century, the Habsburg Empire overtook Ottoman Hungary and Eger was one of the last cities that the Turks left. The tactic here was that the Austrian-Hungarian troops took over all the supply lines to the city and basically starved them out. When the occupiers decided to give up, they could leave unharmed. The Habsburg Empire made all of Hungary, including Transylvania, a part of their empire and governed from Vienna. Therefore, they ordered destruction of all forts in the country, including that of Eger. However, they only got to the outer part before they ran out of money. The castle had a role in the large-scale uprising led by Francis II Rákóczi at the start of the 18th century, but that failed and a lot of the city's buildings have stones from the castle as they were reused. The area wasn't impacted much by the revolution of 1848 and 49. In the 19th century, wine production really took off in the region. Also, after the revolution, the bishop in charge of Eger 
made great strides towards building the city as an educational center. There was a huge library for the university, they established schools for women, and basically made sure everyone could find their education here. Giza Gardoni, famous for the novel Eclipse of the Crescent Moon, which covers the siege of Eger in 1552, got his degree here. Every Hungarian person reads the novel in school or at least watches the movie. It was one of my favorites when I was 10 and read it a few times. The Frankly, although he wrote many more novels, that's all everyone reads. You can order the novel from Amazon and also rent the movie online through Filmio. Links in the description. The city did suffer several natural disasters, mostly fires and floods. The biggest flood was in 1878. Several people died and you can still see marks on the buildings that commemorate how high the water came. Another type of disaster was the Phylloxera epidemic, which is a microscopic insect originally from America that destroyed a lot of grape fields in Europe. It reached Eger in the 1880s. The only solution was to destroy the fields and repopulate them with types that were immune to the insect. Luckily, they overcame this as well and you can enjoy the fruits of this labor in the many vineries around this area. The First World War had little impact on the area as it had little strategic importance. After the war, Hungary gained its independence but lost two-thirds of its territory. So what was left became more important, especially the bigger cities. A lot of educational centers ended up outside the border, so Eger, as an already established center, was all the more valuable. The city got a lot of new buildings at this time. They also started to excavate the remains of the castle, so what you see there now was started in the 1920s. The Second World War didn't have a huge impact either, the, the general food and other shortages did, and the part of the hospital was destroyed by bombs. It fell into Soviet hands at the end of 1944. After the war, the communist administration didn't look favorably on a city which was governed by bishops for centuries. Most of the schools from elementary to university were Catholic and they were all taken away and closed. Some were re-established as public schools, but the communist administration wanted to make the clerical city suffer. The vineyards were also taken away from their owners and collected state farms were established. If you're wondering, the owners weren't compensated. Not in this area, but my own family also had lands at this time and they were all taken away. We got some meager compensation after the fall of communism, but it was nothing compared to the value of the land nor the income it would have provided. In 1956, there was a revolt against the party and the Soviet occupation. I won't go into details here. If you would like to know more, please let me know in the comments. Eger was also impacted. Nine people died and many were injured and even more were incarcerated for years. In the 1970s, the downtown area underwent major reconstruction. This is very apparent now and it is a major tourist attraction. The area has a real historical feel with its low buildings and pretty facades. It was also at this time that the schools and the university were re-established and the city slowly but surely regained its status as a cultural and educational center. Today you can enjoy the downtown area, 
visit the local wineries and take a walk around the slowly refurbished castle. Eged is also ever expanding its offering of musical events and other events around wine and history. See you there! Thanks for watching!